Okay, so here we are, Valencia and Lenny, we're going to talk about, um, give you some examples of how to parse, how to identify uh, thematic verbs. Okay, we're just going to start with with uh, examples of two verbs. One is the verb didome. You can write that up there. Maybe you'll erase it over here on the right-hand side of the blackboard. Just write didome. Okay. Oops. Sorry. No problem. Well, I did it again. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. Good time. <laughs> did it. Oops. Did it. That's a D. <laughs> oh, okay, good. And there's an accent. Um, and the other verb we're going to do is tithame. Okay. Didome is the verb to give. Okay. And tithame is a verb that uh, originally means uh, um, to establish something. Okay. Um, to establish something, but um, and it's cognate with the Latin verb facio. It also means to make. Okay, it means to means uh, we have lots of cognates of didome like donate and um, and um, uh, dative is actually one because of the, mm -hmm. the sentence with the dative is a sentence about giving, <laughs> um, but. Uh, uh, there are examples of that in English. And tithame, the root is, this is an Indo-European root, and the English word doom comes from the same root because it's the limits on life, all right? It's, it has to do with placing limits. So do, the Doomsday Book, for example, which was about land tenure, is an old use of the same root about establishing boundaries and stuff like that. So anyway, it mean, but it means all of these wonderful cosmic and religious things, but in, in Greek, in, in classical Greek, it means to put or place something. Okay, the older meaning is make. Um, so the, 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 we're not going to look at the principal parts yet. We know everything we need to know from the video we just did, okay, about the, about the three aspect stems and the distinctive features of these verbs. So if we look at the first one on our list here, we've got dido. So what do you do when you, when you see an athematic verb like this? Um, and you're going to know, know them when you see them because there are just three of them, okay. Um, what the first thing you want to do is decide which aspect stem it is, okay? And nothing could be clearer, is it, if you remember the rule, right? You've got a reduplication there with an iota. So which aspect stem is it, Belisi? It's imperfective. imperfective, okay? So the next thing you do is you get, so that's what the di is. The do is the stem with a certain vowel in it, okay? And then the next thing is the ending, so there's no, no thematic vowel. So what is the ending s in verbs that you know? Second person singular. So there you are. You're done. This is the present second person singular. There's no augment. Okay, that's a primary ending, right? Um, that's also f true for a second ending. So it's second person singular is the present indicative. You might want to erase the that stuff there. Great. Okay. All right. Um, Let's look at the next one, the doye song. Okay, we ask the same question every time. What kind of reduplication does it have, if any? Okay, and it's the same. It's a, it's an imperfective aspect form. Um, the next thing you notice is so you got the de, and now you have da. Okay, so there's the vowel alternation in the stem. We're not going to worry about it. Okay, but the next thing you have is iota eta, and the son ending. Well, we've seen this son ending before, but we mentioned it as one of the characteristics of the athematic verbs, right? Mm -hmm. So what person is that? Third person plural. Of a secondary ending. And what's the iota eta? Optative. Optative, right, which always has secondary endings. So there's your third person plural of the present, so-called present optative, okay? It's the optative of the imperfective aspect, right? All right. Great. All right, let's look at the next one. We've got e, de, du, okay? So what have we got here? We've got e, that's an augment. We know that this is a past tense. We've got our reduplication with an iota, so we know it's imperfective aspect. So if it's past and imperfective, it's the imperfect, mm -hmm. right? What kind of an ending has it got? Well, there's du, okay? This is just a variation on the vowel in the ending, right? There's no ending there, right? Right. So if it's a secondary tense, okay, which ending is a no ending in the in the in Greek verbs? It's nu, sigma, nothing, right? So this is third person singular, first person singular nu, second person singular sigma, third person singular zip. Okay, so it's third person singular of the imperfect 
integer. All these forms, by the way, are active. Okay, we'll look at the middle ones. They're easier than anything you've ever seen. Yeah. Okay, here's one. All right. All right, we've got number four. We've got D. Okay, so we know we're again in the imperfective aspect. We've got DO, but there's something interesting going on here. There's a circumflex over that DO. Okay, and then we've got SLE. So the SLE, we know what that is. That's a second person uh, plural middle ending. So it's just a, some kind of imperfective, imperfective aspect stem. It's, a, it's a, a, a second person plural middle. What's going on with that circumflex? We're not worried about the omega, but the circumflex is something to worry about. Because we, we, otherwise these verbs have a recessive accent. I'll tell you what that circumflex is. <laughs> it's the mark of the subjunctive, okay? Because mm -hmm. you've got a double thematic vowel. The omega there gives you the, the omega with the circumflex on it. So when if you see an omega with a circumflex on it, or an eta with a circumflex on it, in the athematic verb, it's a subjunctive, Jim. okay? So that's what's distinctive about it. If it were didos there, it's not a real form, but if it were, it would be indicative with any, if it had an accent on the third to last syllable. So again, we're not worried about the vowel, but we are worried about the accents, right. okay? So that's a form that doesn't have recessive accent. We need to explain why, and the reason why is that it's subjunctive, okay? All right, last one on our, on our next last one here, we got two of them. This verb is tithese, okay? The root is theta, eta, theta, epsilon, theta, epsilon, iota, can be all three of those things. When you reduplicate a stem that begins with a theta, right, remember the rule, you can't have two successive yeah. syllables that begin with an aspirated consonant. So the theta turns into a tau, which is the unaspirated form of the theta. So te, the, si is like de, do, si. It's a form of the imperfective aspect stem, okay? Mm -hmm. What ending is that? Third person. Uh, singular. Singular, <laughs> right? Because it looks like a third person plural, right? You hesitated. But the the is the is the stem of the verb. That's not a thematic vowel. The si is a third person singular ending, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the third person singular of the present indicative, right? Indicative, not the subjunctive, okay? Right. Okay? Third person singular, present active indicative, okay? Right. All of these forms are active. All right, so now let's move to the last one. You've got another imperfective aspect stem. The stem here has become theta epsilon. We're not worried about that. We just ignore it. Okay. Um, and we have the suffix to. What is that suffix? Imperative. <laughs> yeah, we just learned that. That's the third person singular active imperative. So what have we got? Third person singular present active imperative. Period. Okay. So so you see that with a couple of rules, okay, and some experience, we've already been able to identify a whole bunch of forms. Okay, we're going to stop there, and then we're going to give you another set of them to play with, and then you're going to do this yourselves.